Good morning. Good morning and welcome to worship here at Providence Church. <clears throat> it's been a busy weekend um, here. Uh, a hard weekend, but, but a very blessed weekend. Um, we've got several things going on uh, this weekend and today. I want to, and, and this coming, uh, in coming days, I want to bring your attention to um, next Sunday, are we going to meet in here for worship next Sunday? No, no we're not. Um, but we are going to be so, uh, I'm so pleased that we're going to be gathered together with Old Bethel United Methodist Church. Uh, you find the address there on the back of your worship guide, uh, 222 Calhoun Street. Um, I have been told there is parking available. I do not have the details on exactly where I will get those to uh, everyone via email this week. Um, and uh, we are tentatively invited for lunch following the service as well, so you're welcome uh, to stay for that um, and make your plans accordingly. Uh, we've had several questions about what are we going to do if somebody shows up here at the church? Um, and that is a great question, one that I hadn't really thought about. So we're going to have a couple of volunteers here at the church to greet and, and welcome anybody who comes that does not know uh, that we are not meeting here. And then we will have, uh, since they stream their services as well, um, we're going to have that project the streamed service uh, here in the sanctuary because people will not have time to get down there because if they get here at 10.30, our normal start time, they're already 30 minutes late for worship because what time are we going to start next Sunday at Old Bethel? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. That's 30 minutes earlier than our normal start time and it's in a different location. So you might want to start at 8.30 heading out, planning where you're going to go for worship. Um, I do want to draw your attention to the last announcement on your, uh, in your worship guide today, and that is counters. Um, so every Sunday we, uh, we take up an offering, a very Baptist thing for us to do, and one that, that uh, quite frankly sustains uh, our church and, 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 the, and its ministries. But um, we don't have enough people right now signed up in the rotation to help count those offerings each Sunday. So we need more folks to help with that. So if you are at all uh, able and willing to, to do that, uh, please let the, the front office know. And then then uh, another ministry that has um, that is taking an, an extra person each week um, is the camera. Uh, you'll see Scott McBroom back on the camera today. Um, us being able to stream our services um, has been a wonderful uh, blessing for many um, who are not able to be present uh, physically with us in worship, um, but that takes an extra volunteer. So Matt has asked uh, for additional folks to sign up for that. Um, do you have a, does it, who has a phone? in here. I, I'm, I'm serious. Raise your hand if you have a cell phone. You are qualified <laughs> to serve as a, a camera operator. That's the only qualification that there is. And even if you don't own one, we can teach you how to use one. That is not a difficult thing. Uh, um, I'm going to ask Susan King to come now uh, to lead us in our business. Good morning. Um, this morning, we're going to go ahead and take a vote on our Providence Church, Church Affirmation of, of Inclusion. Ooh, that's a lot to get out. The Providence Church Affirmation of Inclusion. And so you should have received a ballot already at the door. If you didn't and would like one, please raise your hand. So we'll go ahead and collect this during the offering, at the offering plate. And there are, there's also an opportunity to vote online. So those of you watching from home, you can um, see your email. If you've already voted, um, you can mark here that you've already voted because we really just need one from each person. Um, we'll count those after the service today and we'll send out the results by email. Are there any questions on the process? All right, great. Again, we'll collect those with the offering. Thank you.
That seemed like such a simple, anticlimactic announcement for such an important thing uh, for us to do as a church. And I appreciate the, the, the Ministry Coordination Council's leadership in, uh, in, in doing this. So now, as we turn our attention toward worship, know that Christ is with you. Please join me in our call to worship. God, who created the fields of Eden, takes delight in all things, including us. God of glory, God of grace, your name is exalted in all the earth. Christ, who walked the streets of our world, gives hope to all people, including us. God of glory, God of grace, your Son and Savior, all creation. God's Spirit, who stays in our hearts, bears truth and peace to us. God of glory, God of grace, your love surrounds our every moment. Hear these words from the psalmist. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth. You made your glory higher than heaven. From the mouths of nursing babies, you have laid a strong foundation because of your foes in order to stop vengeful enemies. When I look up at your skies, at what your fingers made, the moon and the stars that you set firmly in place, what are human beings that you think about them? What are human beings that you pay attention to them? You've made them only slightly less than divine, crowning them with glory and grandeur. You've let them rule over your handiwork, putting everything under their feet. All sheep and cattle, the wild animals too, the birds in the sky, the fish of the ocean, everything that travels the pathways of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
Let us pray. God, on this, the end of this busy and trying week, we come together. May we rest in your peace. O oh God, we honor this day, the majesty and the mystery of your name. You are both infinite and intimate, known and unknowable, transcendent and transparent. In love, you have made us your own and invite us to join in your divine dance. We will never rest until we rest in you. Blessed Trinity, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Gospel reading this morning is from the book of John, chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. I have much more to tell you, but you can't bear to hear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, she will guide you into all truth. She won't speak on her own initiative. Rather, she'll speak only what she hears, and she'll announce to you things that are yet to come. In doing this, the spirit will give glory to me, for she will take what is mine and reveal it to you. Everything that Abba God has belongs to me. This is why I said that the Spirit will take what is mine and reveal it to you. Within a short time, you won't see me, but soon after that, you'll see me again. Here is what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite any children who are here to come down to the front for some special time together. Come on up. You're going to have the best seat in the house for this one. So today is a Sunday that we call Trinity Sunday. And, you know, it's a Sunday where we think about the different images and pictures that we have of God. And there are an awful lot of them. And so I have this book to share with you this morning. Some of you may have seen it before. It's uh, called What is God Like? by Rachel Held Evans and Matthew Paul Turner. And it helps me think about God, and maybe it will help you too. What is God like? That's a very big question, one that people from places all around the world have wondered about since the beginning of time. And while nobody has seen all of God, because God is far too big for any of us to fully see, we can know what God is like. God is like an eagle, sharp-eyed and swift, with wings wide, so wide that you can play under their shadows. God is like a river, constant and life-giving. When you grow near God, you'll sprout up strong as a tree. God is like the stars, forever present and bright. Even when they feel far away, you can always look up and see them winking at you. God is like a shepherd, brave and good, a protector who loves her sheep so much that she watches over all of them and knows each of their names by heart. God is like a fort, strong and secure with walls that are mighty and safe. Inside, there are hidden places to hold you when you're scared or need a quiet place to rest. God is like a gardener, patient and nurturing. 
God plants, waters, weeds, and fertilizes the earth until every good thing on it seeks the nourishing sun and grows. God is like the flame of a candle, warm and inviting. With God close by, you can look to the light and see through the darkest of nights. God is like the wind, passionate and full of mystery. God is both here and mysteriously also over there. God is everywhere, swirling throughout the world, whistling across mountain ranges, rustling through trees, and pressing against your cheeks on a breezy day. God is like an artist, creative and unpredictable, always busy making and remaking everything brilliant and new. God is like a mother, strong and safe. You can crawl up into her lap whenever you want to, and she will hold you until you fall asleep. God is like a father, gentle and safe. He will put you on top of his shoulders to give you a bird's eye view of all creation. God is like three dancers, graceful and precise. They move to the same music in very different ways, showcasing all of God's elegance and rhythm in your life. This one's my favorite. God is like a rainbow, vivid and full of color, a dazzling reminder of promise and hope for all people after a storm. God is like a best friend, faithful and true, closer to you than even your brothers or sisters. And because we know what God is like, we know that God is kind. God is forgiving. God is slow to get angry. God is quick to be glad. God is happy when you tell the truth and sad when things are unfair. She is your protector. He is trustworthy. They are friends when you feel alone. God hopes. God perseveres. What is God like? That's a very big question. One that people from places all around the world throughout all time have answered in many different ways. Keep searching. Keep wondering, keep learning about God. But whenever you aren't sure what God is like, think about what makes you feel safe, what makes you feel brave, and what makes you feel loved. That's what God is like. Feel free to sing and worship with us during this song. If you know the song, sing with us. We're My God, my Savior has 
ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, my chains are gone. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine. God who called me here below will be forever mine, will be forever mine. You are forever mine. This is one of those sun, uh, one of those Sundays where, if I were a smart pastor, I would just say, "Amen." Amen. Thank you. Let's go. Um, uh, David, Elaine, Tony, that was beautiful. David, and Elaine, and Allison, I want to thank, uh, as well as all of those who helped make uh, yesterday such a, a beautiful um, tribute to our dear friend and saint Corliss Davini. Um, I can't thank you enough on behalf of the family for your presence and your support for them uh, in these recent times. Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing unto you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Now, I don't usually point out the cover of our orders of worship, um, but I hope you notice them anyway. In case you don't know, it's pretty unusual for us to have uniquely designed graphic icons for the cover of our order of worship each week, or for a series of, of weeks. Um, this would usually be uh, a luxury enjoyed only by very large churches with large budgets and in-house uh, graphic designers. Um, uh, we are immensely blessed to have our own in-house graphic designer in the person of Richard G., um, but we just don't happen to pay him for these, this incredible work. I point it out today because I hope you will notice it in the future if you haven't already and the contribution and, um, and appreciate how it enhances our worship experience here. Um, 
This week I pointed out also because of the particular origins of this particular icon. So I, I told Richard that we wouldn't need an icon for next Sunday because we won't be here in worship because we will be with Old Bethel United Methodist Church down on the peninsula. Um, and, uh, and that starting on the 26th, uh, he is designing um, a, uh, an icon for a series that we'll have uh, looking at the writings of the prophets uh, for uh, some summer months. Um, but we would need a unique icon for today on Trinity Sunday if he happened to have one. Um, well, he asked me for inspiration. Usually I just give him a sermon title or a general idea, and he gets inspired himself on how to display that. Um, but this is one of those times where I had a very specific image in mind. You see, this symbol for the Trinity has been in my head for years. Um, I've just never brought it to a reality before. I'm a very visual thinker, so frequently... When I want to grasp abstract concepts, I need to give them a face or a, a physical form or an artistic form in some way. And I remember all the way back in seminary when I first really started thinking about and, and wrestling with the concept of the, thr the Trinity, the, th the three God in one idea. Um, for a while, every time I saw the angled arrows forming the green or blue triangle that we started associate, that we think of as the recycling symbol, I would think about God the Creator, God the Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, I know that's kind of weird that I wouldn't start doing that, but I did. Um, but I think it's also kind of beautiful because how many times do we see that symbol every day without really thinking about it? So it, it gave me a way that would bring the sacred into the everyday several times a day. Now, I don't do that anymore. That, you know, that was a phase that I went through where I would see that symbol and think about the Trinity. Um, uh, but this time, when Richard said, so do you have any ideas, I was able to very quickly and very specifically describe this recycling symbol. Um, but I asked him to make sure that the arrows went both ways, not just a single arrow, uh, set of arrows. And, and to replace those common words, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle, that we often see, but to replace those with converse, commit, and commune. I would challenge you to start doing the same. Not necessarily with the recycling symbol, but you can do that if it works for you. But start looking for commonplace things that you see frequently all around you. Is there anything that you see that you can connect with the sacred, with a sacred thought? Maybe stop signs could be a reminder for the need of Sabbath rest on your busy days and weeks. Or maybe every time you go over a bridge, which we do that a lot here, um, you could think about your connections with God and with other people. Or maybe each bridge is a challenge to let the waters underneath you wash away the past and for you to live only in the present. Whatever symbols or triggers you can find to connect to the sacred in your everyday life, I encourage you to do so. Well, that's not really the sermon, so I guess you can think of that as our little pre-bonus homily or devotional. Um, but I do encourage you to find symbols in your everyday life to remind you of the sacred. So as we see in this symbol, today is Trinity Sunday. What words or images express a three-in God, three-in-one God to your heart. Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Daddy, brother, companion. 
lover, beloved, love, creator, savior, sanctifier, king of glory, prince of peace, spirit of love, mother, child, womb. Now, I'd be really surprised if you didn't notice that in, from the translation of the Gospel of John that Leanne read from, the spirit of truth is referred to using female pronouns. Now, many, if not most, of the images in the Bible of the Holy Spirit are actually describing feminine images. However, in spite of that imagery that is so pronounced in the scriptures, most of our male scribes and translators through history have used exclusively male pronouns. Now, certainly there have been exceptions. The Christian mystics, for example, frequently used female, male, and what we would now call non-binary descriptions of God. Julian of Norwich, who lived in the 13 and 1400s, so a little bit before we started using the words non-binary, she envisioned the Holy Trinity as Father, Mother, and Lord. Our Father wills, our Mother works, and the Lord of the Spirit confirms. Now, I'm not trying to sell you or to convince you that any particular translation or imagery is correct. I'm just saying that if God can't be contained within a single component of the Trinity, then how could God be contained within a single gender either? Why do you think God gave us so many different multiple selves for God, traits, images of God's self. I think we get a hint of that in the first sentence of our gospel reading today. I have much more to tell you, but you can't bear to hear it now. Jesus knows that his followers have limits that he doesn't have, and and Christ has much more to say, but he realizes that they've reached their saturation point at the time. Have you ever been there? You know, there is so much more to learn, to think about God or creation or humanity, but you just need to to stop and, and sit with what you have for a while to let it sink in before you can start thinking about tackling anything else. The Spirit's job is to work around those saturation points, to be continually increasing our saturation points. The different selves for God, they, they give us different points of entry and different relationships through which to understand the unimaginable. God knows that a one-size-fits-all God would never work with such an amazingly diverse and complex creation. But what might work instead is to give us different levels, different approaches, different concepts of God that converse with each other. And we get to hear these conversations between God and God. And, and they in, ultimately end up communing together with each other. And, and, and in one of the greatest mysteries of all, we are invited to join in that communion. And no matter where we are at any given time, There is someone specifically for us with whom we can relate in that communion. Maybe we're disappointed, just as the God, as God the Creator, is disappointed when the creation chooses 
ways of selfishness or separation. Maybe we're broken. Just as Jesus said, his body was broken for us. Maybe we're empty and poured out just as the cup was poured out for many. Maybe we're the parent, or maybe we're the child. Maybe you're, you're strong enough now to, to be ready to serve as a guide, leading others to the truth, even as you still continue learning lessons for yourself. Maybe you find yourself advocating for others, just as the divine advocate advocates works on your behalf. Maybe the lesson you need to learn today is in the glory and grandeur of the stars and the moon being set in their places, or perhaps it's the birds of the air or the fish in the sea. Or maybe the lesson that you need to learn today is in the person, the human being, sitting right next to you in whom we are all called to pay more attention than we do. God's not the one who needs for there to be a trinity, multiple expressions of God. It's us who needs that. The trinity is not intended for confusion, but for understanding, for reference points. We are invited to commit ourselves to a God who actually wants to be with us, who, who wants to converse with us, who wants to commune with us, to commune with all. We pray together. Creator, Redeemer, and Advocate, God, how majestic is your name throughout the earth and on heavens. We are mystified and eternally blessed that you would be committed to us and that you ask us to commit ourselves to you. We are bewildered and delighted that you would wish to converse with us. We are humbled and honored that you invite us to commune with you at your table. We thank you that everyone here is welcome to God's table. Amen. We are all welcome to this table where we commune with each other and with God where we take the bread of life, take the body of Christ into ourselves, where we receive the cup of grace as it is poured out for all of us, for our many transgressions. Please join me now with our litany leading us to receive these gifts. We will then proceed up the center aisles, so all three center aisles to the front, and then ask you to return to your seats by the side aisles along the walls. I know it's here somewhere. Let us read our litany together. Breath of peace, flowing river of life, move upon the gift of creation offered to us. Then when you stand at the crossroad where injustice and oppression meet, may we join your compassionate voice in calling for life and hope for all of God's creation. May we join you at the gates of hopelessness, bringing our sisters and brothers out of the depths of despair. And 
when the mountains have crumbled to dust, we will gather together with those of every time and place who are seated at the feast in heaven, delighting in the one who has lived, has loved us from the beginning. God in community, holy in one. Amen. Amen.
Out of the abundance of God's own life, we have received the abundance of God's creation, God's word, and God's love. Let us return to God a portion of all that we have been given with joyous and glad abandon. Holy God, you have poured out so much for us, the beauty of the world, the care of family and friends, meaningful labor, and the gift of the church. We give you thanks for these and many other gifts. Most especially, we thank you for pouring your love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. In Christ's name we pray. May we reflect on the, the ways that we participate, converse, and commune with that God. What is our commitment going to be in the days ahead? Let us sing now.
Amen. This was not printed in your worship guide this morning, but the flowers uh, in the sanctuary were given by the Divinity family in, to adorn our worship space in memory of Corliss. As we remember, the Divinity family gave flowers just last week in honor of Corliss's birthday. So as we go about our way this week, May the beauty of God be reflected in our eyes, the love of God reflected in our hands, the wisdom of God reflected in our words, and the knowledge of God flow from our hearts so that all might see, and in seeing, believe. Believe.